scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no great man that you know today in this nation and across the globe, including our Father in the Lord, Daddy Jew, you see that the mysteries that they have access to is credited to their submission to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There are many of you here who have had visions of mighty, mighty things that God will be doing in and through your life and yet you have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There is no possibility of becoming if you ignore him. The Holy Spirit is beyond the Pentecostal phenomenon. The Holy Spirit is beyond the charismatic phenomenon. Jesus gave the Holy Spirit as a gift to the church. The guarantee that we will become. Is someone hearing now? This is important. For someone God is speaking to you. It's important to embrace the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad I did. Look what he's made out of my life. The Holy Spirit, listen, can turn darkness to chaos. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, when there was darkness and chaos, it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then it says now the earth was dark and void and formless. From the Hebrew word tohu wa bohu, confusion and chaos. And then it says but the spirit hovered round the face every time there is darkness and void a life with no color a life with no beauty no dignity doesn't matter how it happened to your grandfather to your father you submit to the Holy Spirit and see what he's able to do he is brooding over every darkness he is causing lights to shine from darkness the holy ghost is brooding over every darkness he's causing lights to shine so are we still together now we're dealing with the phase of renewal and transformation and i'm introducing to you the person of the holy spirit and that the Holy Spirit quickens your spirit man and your organs to help you comprehend spiritual things. Now you will see value in fasting. Now you will see value in prayer. Now you will see value in going to church because your spirit man has been quickened. Attempting to force religious activities on people without the Holy Spirit sponsoring the quickening will only lead to a burdensome ritual. It is the Holy Spirit that plants passion within your heart. So that you will do things that seem to be laborious but with joy. Because your spirit man has been quickened. Is someone hearing now? So the Holy Spirit activates your organs of interaction with the spirit. Being alive unto God. The Holy Spirit is responsible for revelation and understanding very very important hear me please it is at this point of renewal and transformation that you now begin to learn 
the ways of God. The Holy Spirit introduces the word of God to you. Now the word of God can be valuable to you. Listen, the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word are the two principal forces that sponsor transformation and renewal. There is no superstition to transformation and renewal. It is your ability to immerse yourself in fellowship with the spirit and to be studious of scripture. It says, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture, it says, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, and now brethren, Acts 20, 32. And now brethren, I commend you to God, it says, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. It is the word of God that builds. The word of God helps you to understand the modus operandi of the kingdom. Now you know how the kingdom operates. You begin to learn what the Bible calls the ways of God. And you see according to scripture, the ways of God precede the glory of God. You cannot see the glory of God until you understand his ways. Moses said, show me your ways. Then he said, show me your glory. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 the Lord commanded Moses he said this is the thing that the Lord commanded that you should do and then the glory shall appear unto you there is something you need to know and then it empowers you to do and then the glory comes in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 the B part says but the people that do know their God they shall be strong capacity and they shall do exploits it takes knowledge then becoming then doing you shall know then you shall be then you shall do you cannot do without knowing you cannot do without being are we together now yes you now begin to know what the bible calls the truth and the bible says with the truth comes liberty you will know that you know the truth because you will begin to experience liberty across various aspects of your life you now begin to learn scripture that there is he that scattereth and yet tends to penury but there is he that uh, scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty you are understanding the economic system of the kingdom now you are understanding the value of prayer the bible says for instance in john in uh, mark 11 and verse 24 it says verily verily i say unto you what things soever ye desire when you pray that means your desire remains unfruitful until you mix it with prayer that automatically activates your prayer life because the word of god has given you spiritual illumination luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians 5 17 he says to pray without ceasing are we together now you start engaging fellowship and prayer with the spirit and the ministry of the word i give you a guarantee as you begin to submit to the spirit submit to the ministry of prayer submit to the ministry of the word and evolving begins to happen in your spirit the weak you starts becoming the strong you the timid you starts becoming the powerful you the foolish you starts becoming the wise you because the word of god is a compendium of the wisdom of god is someone learning so if your spiritual experience is unprofitable by this journey god is showing everyone where you stand there are those who are not even saved in the first place in the moment i'm going to be making an altar call and giving you a chance to make it right with jesus but for the many who are saved and yet your life is not fruitful and not profitable i am showing you what is missing you have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit alongside the fortitude for prayer that comes as a result of fellowship with him. The primary assignment of prayer is not to get things. 
the primary assignment of prayer is as a tool for growth and transformation luke chapter 9 and verse 29 it says and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering is god speaking to us yes all men ought to pray not as a burdensome ritual not as pretense to show spirituality it is part of the spiritual growth protocol that helps men so every day you are praying 30 minutes one hour two hours three hours as god grants you grace then submitting to the ministry of the word something begins to happen to you listen very carefully i can assure you submit yourself to the ministry of the word submit yourself to fellowship with the spirit submit yourself to the ministry of prayer and something begins to happen to you illumination comes to your mind spiritual understanding comes to you ah. light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord Light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Listen. Can I tell you one of the ways that you measure your growth and maturity in the spirit? Listen very carefully is to begin to measure your speakings the bible says when i was a child i spoke like a child is that true i understood like a child i thought like a child that means the word of god affects these various faculties of your life your thinking your understanding and your speaking now let me get to phase three very quickly is god speaking to someone i hope you've not forgotten what we're dealing with three phases in that believer's journey the first phase is the starting point, an encounter with Jesus. Jesus says, I am the door. Not one of the doors, the only door, the way in fact. Now you get to the second phase, major phase, renewal and transformation. That by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that by the ministry of consistent prayer, that by the ministry of the study, of the word of God among the many things that happen in this phase too is a revelation you see the more you know God the more you understand yourself the Bible says as we behold him as in a mirror he says we are changed you will become like what you are seeing it is at this phase that the revelation of purpose and destiny comes to you it says lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will by the time you find god god will now begin to show you the blueprint of your destiny you will find yourself gravitating along the areas of your destiny some of you may be five friends praying together studying together you will find one of them begin to diverge to the ministry of the prophetic unusual passion for prayer and fasting the holy ghost is doing a work in that man now he's beginning to he may not even know us at that time that that is what god is doing because you see when you meet god he does not reveal destiny he reveals himself it is when you find him first that destiny becomes profitable when jesus met the disciples he said follow me not follow it no you don't follow it when you come you follow him in following him you will find it whatever that it is follow me and i will make you it is only him that can make remember he's the maker of the heavens and the earth but it is not only the heavens and the earth he makes he makes men too purpose and destiny now you begin to know 
that this is what God has called you into. Out of the abundance of the vast encounters, out of the abundance of a life dedicated to learning, to doctrine, to prayer, to fellowship with the Spirit, it is impossible, ladies and gentlemen, to maximize this phase of your life and not have a rich, robust, profitable stature in the Spirit. It is the absence of this that is responsible for weak believers ignorant believers and believers who are not profitable as far as kingdom come is concerned now watch this let me go to the third phase for the sake of our discussion tonight the third phase is the phase of empowerment and release empowerment and release Release there does not mean leaving you. Empowerment and now releasing you to be a witness. Listen. Never stand before Pharaoh when you have not stood before God. It is a risk to stand before Pharaoh until you know the God who has sent you. When he called Moses... Moses said, don't send me to Pharaoh. That man is a wizard. And it takes more than English or Hebrews for him to deliver the people. I have the destiny of a deliverer. But who shall I tell Moses has sent me? Many of you were called, but you are not yet sent. And you started going. The fact that God called you does not mean he has sent you. He called you to himself. He sends you to the world. Let me repeat, he calls you to himself, he sends you to the world. I can call you. Let me use a gentleman here. Come, sir. Watch this. Have I called him? Has he answered the call? I called him to myself. Now go back. Who sent you? I don't doubt your call, but I doubt your witness. Because when he calls you, he makes you, he empowers you, then he sends you. God called me is not enough to be effective. God calls you to fellowship with Jesus. God calls you to fellowship with the word. God calls you to fellowship with the spirit. Then he sends you. He said, when I sent thee, lackest thou anything? When I sent you, not when you went. Is someone learning now? So the face of empowerment. This is where the Holy Ghost introduces you to the mystery of the anointing. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. And I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil hear me there are levels in the spirit where you collide with the power of the highest in luke chapter 1 from verse 35 when the angel brought glad tidings to Mary, Mary asked a question. Verse 34. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. Joshua Selman, how can God use me to build a global ministry? Seeing that I came from a village somewhere in Port Harcourt. Is it really true that one day I'll be a mother to nations? Is it really true that one day I will be an apostle to the nations? Is it really true that one day I will take the baton of the fathers who have joined the cloud of witnesses? Mary asks a question. How shall it be like God has told you many great things and little you is sitting there wondering, can God really make something out of my life? The answer is found in verse 35. And the angel replied, Mary, Luke 1, 35. The Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the highest. Don't ask how you will go to the nations. 
don't ask how you will go to Europe America help them please the power of the highest is the mystery behind the exploits of men in this kingdom it takes more than intellect and human connection hear me it takes the Holy Ghost to make a generation hear you it takes the power of God that mantles your life it takes the power of God for the sick to be healed it takes the power of God for the oppressed to be it takes the power of God hear me no matter how transformed you are without empowerment you will only be a frustrated knowledgeable believer it's important to know but you must receive the engracing to defend what you know there are many believers who can talk spiritual talk I know my God he's a lion of the tribe of Judah he can lift he can bless and we clap then when it is time to prove the reality of the power of God maybe God is speaking to a man of God you have done well in the area of transformation but this is the missing link to your ministry to the point where if you say God bless you people cannot say amen again because they are so used to the powerlessness of your speakings hear me I understand our father in the Lord that the Jew is going to be graciously visiting Port Harcourt, I think in a matter of days or so a week or a little over a week such an honor and a privilege for your soul to be able to host this general global general again a father of fathers indeed now please listen Baba can stand here and say God bless you and as simple and quiet as it is the testimonies that follow as at the time he's saying it there are people who have no business rising to certain levels but the kind of energy that has been generated through decades of interaction with the spirit that is the energy that is released I flew here from Abuja and every time I fly it's a lesson to me about what power can do the same plane that is going to be flying 35,000 feet above sea level it starts very slow sometimes you would think the plane is too big to fly as it's moving you will think all of the, the pressure gravity the force can stand it but you see when it starts at the runway it begins to run it gets to a speed where it becomes unfair for the plane to remain on the ground Th there is there is a level of speed that when that aircraft gets to it will lift within a moment and in less than a minute it's in the air for someone you are saying apostle have been walking slow there is the energy of the spirit coming on you a time will come in your life you will run like Elijah then you will fly like the eagle help them please please hear me in this sermon tonight I just described for you my spiritual journey with God authentic power is beyond impartation it will take a track record of properly following these faces many people keep receiving hands laid on them with an empty mind the absence of a track record with the Holy Spirit the ministry of prayer and the word that's why the impartation does not serve the value of impartation is that it comes upon a knowledgeable vessel are we together the spirit of the living God when that power from on high comes upon you ladies and gentlemen it is able to turn Saul into Paul ah it is able to turn Sarai into Sarah tonight the Lord has sent me here to give us an opportunity to experience all three phases for someone 
the first phase is your desperate need you were invited for this crusade probably thank you for coming for someone what you need is the grace and the energy to step into a season of radical transformation and renewal some of you who are already prematurely exposed in ministry may need to take a little break and say this shame and reproach that I keep bringing on the altar I am tired of it I need to return back and file myself not from a competitive standpoint but so that I can become a battle axe that cuts indeed then the final phase I believe there are many people here who are sincerely saying apostle I with all humility I can say that I've submitted myself to doctrine and learning but the power of God seems to be absent from my life my family my ministry and my business ladies and gentlemen let me tell you you cannot accomplish the purposes of God in the strength of the flesh and you see the thing about spiritual power is that if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there there is no hoping wishing you can know that it has come he says such as I have you can know you have it we see the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain Hey, open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain let it rain let it rain shema na na masia na ba na shabra da tema na na ba na masia na 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 ba na shalima na se na ba na na she na de she na na she na na Alaga baraka ta prasa da balaka to shafra ka da balakos ta pranta ka barato safra ka ska da balaka ta praska beda ka to siata pranta ka baraka ba ka to shafra ka da balaka ta ha pate ka baraka ta e te shavariata e praka to ska da bakata shabada 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 e preke preke te ka to ska te balaka ta Prophet Joel said, "Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm, put a cut." I came by the road of the higher priesthood to sound an alarm that there is a revival coming. There are men and women of God that must arise, 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 awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee light. Atela kaparaka tabata. The ministry of the Holy Ghost bringing empowerment bringing empowerment capacity to represent him as a witness he said but ye shall receive power ye shall receive power not just knowledge ye shall receive power hear me when that grace comes upon you <laughs> Saul you may be the son of Kish but when you meet prophet Samuel you will be turned into another man you will come to the garrison of the Philistines someone tonight is about to be turned to another man turned to another man open your mouth wherever you are and begin to cry for the Holy Ghost open your mouth right where you are Spirit of the Living God 
You are the maker of men. The quickener of our spirit man. Someone pray. Hallelujah, hear me. Hear me. There is a cloud of God's glory over this congregation. For some of you, God is saying, I've been waiting for you to hear this message. To connect it to the dreams that you've been having. You have been seeing yourself mightily used by God. But you've been saying, how shall I become that? This message was a roadmap for you. There are many ladies here. You will rise after the order of Deborah. Mighty warriors indeed. Mighty warriors. Like Deborah. Mighty warriors. Mighty warriors. Mighty warriors. Bring them out. Mighty warriors. By the spirit. Mighty warriors. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Mighty warriors. In the spirit. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.